people were calling her the diva. Well, it's hot out here in these streets. Yeah. Okay, ready? Okay, here we go. go. <clears throat> hey, welcome back. I'm Martin Burgess. And I'm Dan Enriquez. We've got a jam-packed show today. We've had a huge Mariah week, I guess, with Meghan Markle's podcast, and there's so much to unpack in that. Yes, and we got little tidbits of Mariah information, like where in the world is Mariah? In the streets. She's out in the streets. Mm -hmm. All kinds of things. We got anniversaries. Ooh, we got a lot to talk about. Updates. All oh, yes. Things. All kinds of things. Yeah. But yes. before we get into the Mariah talk, I had a really fun weekend last weekend. I went and saw Mariah adjacent uh, friend, I guess, Diana Ross. Oh, yes. Miss Ross. Yeah. Was the what, boss. I know. I went with my friend and uh, it was amazing. It was, it was very Mariah-esque, the whole thing. Oh, really? Yeah. It was at the Hollywood Bowl here uh -huh. in L.A., very diva, very, um, she had her gowns, a clip on dress here and there, uh -huh, uh -huh. all the things that we love and fan too. Cause have you noticed Mariah's in the fan era now? Yes. Carrying fans around. Well, it's hot out here in these streets it too, is. It especially is. I bet on stage Yeah, with all the lights. Mm -hmm. And how long did she play? How long was it? Like an, two hours? Almost. Yeah. It felt, okay. felt long. Did all her hits. Okay. Okay. Love hangover. Love it. Did the baby doll. Okay. Stop in the name of love. Uh-huh. Uh, also, everything, she did everything. Everything you can imagine. She did all like the Supreme songs too, the hits of them, the the, yeah. the good ones, yeah. or at least a handful of them. Mm -hmm. All right. The funny thing was she shaded the audience because she's because we get towards I guess like the second half of the show or deeper into it. Uh huh. And she brings up that there's a new album out. Oh really? Yes. And she was like, "Y'all didn't buy it." <laughs> yes, but she says it like this. She says they seem to know about it in Europe, but here. It's it's a new album. Oh. I'll go home and look it up. It's been out since last November. Oh, get out. <laughs> I'd never heard of it. No, me neither. Yeah. I had no idea. I know. Interesting. So she has a new album still out. I guess Diana <laughs> okay, what's it called? <laughs> thank you. It's called Thank You. Well, thank you. Kitchen Table Talk, the, yeah. the graphics. I the thing was very Canva. Oh, really? Yes. Like on the stage and the yeah, screens and everything? Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, you know. The budget. Listen. The budget. But the whole show was fun. I had such a great time. Yeah. You're there for like the hits, the, the hits. songs, the, the, the iconicness of it. Iconic. Yes. yes. We love Diana. I know. So it was so much fun. Really loved it. Did she do a lot of songs you didn't know? Or was it really all the hits? All the hits, which got me thinking, because, you know, we're always complaining. Mariah does her number one set list all the time. Yeah. Not enough of the deep cuts. Right. I was Joe Schmo at the, the Diana Ross concert. Uh-huh. I needed the hits. You would you would have felt some kind of way if she didn't do Stop in the Name of Love. Right. Or Love, love hang Hangover and all uh -huh, those things. Uh -huh. mm -hmm, you know? So now I, now I see the other side of the coin that we complain about. I mean, I guess that's always going to be the struggle when you have so many hits. Mm -hmm. And then you have, like, long time dedicated hardcore fan base. And then the Joe Schmoes. Yeah. How do you please them all? The locals showing up. Gosh, that is a tough one. I but, know, I know. You know, I will say, I think on Mariah's last tour, Caution, I think she did a great balance. That was a good balance. That was a really good balance yes, of the set list. That it was, was a great set list. Really, really good. So it's possible, but it takes some work to get, you know, that perfect balance between the fans and the Joes. A lot of complaining <laughs> from the fans, I think. No, but now I understand what when you go to Vegas, when Mariah oh, gets yeah, to yeah, Vegas. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but what that entails and what that means, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, but then also creates an argument for we do want this specific lamb show, right? We're with all the deep cuts, and yes. we don't need the number ones. No, and Joe Schmo, what are you even doing here? Yeah, this isn't for you, right? So I guess you got to play to the audience and know who's coming to the show, locations, mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff too. Yeah. I mean, it's, so, it's, I had an epiphany. Yeah, there you have it. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. So, but now you see it is a hard balance. So us over here complaining is really, will be less hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's crazy that you bring that up because I was actually just watching a bunch of Mariah YouTube videos and you know, I love the Divas 2000. Love. Love that. Yes. Oh my gosh. And then with Diana Ross. Yes. With Diana Ross. And then at the end when everybody comes out mm -hmm. and Mariah's in the butterfly top mm -hmm. and and, um, Doing eight in a mountain. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. And everybody's there. Destiny's Child, RuPaul. Yes. All these people. It's so crazy to see I just everybody that way the other back. Day too. Yeah, yeah. I know, right? It's Donna Summer. Crazy. Yes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. All that kind of stuff. But I love it. Diana and Mariah in those dresses when they did um, that little uh, duet thing. So in that clip, Diana's wearing that big like poofy number. 
for Angel Mountain High, high yes, enough. Yes, the yeah. big purple thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so so go, if you, to describe it, big, poofy, like over the shoulder, covers her up, up to the neck. Um, it looks like a shower loofah, if you want to uh, describe it. <laughs> it's like frilly and <laughs> light, it looks. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's how she. That's how she opened her show. But we're getting three looks out of this. So she comes out with the up around her neck. Uh huh. Then that falls down and turns into a dress. Okay. And she's wearing a very was wearing a very Mariah esque like um, corset style bedazzled number. With, All right. With poofy skirt now. All right. And then the poofiness clips off, and now we have a third look. Oh. You see. Interesting. Yes. yes. It felt very Mariah. It, that it sounds very Mariah. I'm getting um, Angel's Advocate tour where uh -huh. she comes down in sort of like that poofy cupcake looking uh -huh. thing and then it comes uh -huh. off and then it's like a thing. Yeah, it's very that. Very that. Well, you got to utilize everything. Yes. Utilize it all. Right. We're That's... doing on set wardrobe changes. Hey, honey, please. <laughs> yes, please. I love it though. Yeah. I love it. Oh, she looked amazing too. By, by and how did she sound? Great. Same. Same vocals she's always had. So I was expecting, just because, you know, the age and the time of day, I guess, or whatever, <laughs> the dryness, I was expecting a lot of talk singing. Uh-huh. No, she was like singing, singing. All right. I, I don't know if she was doing trickery. I didn't know her vocals that well. But there was nothing that looked fishy. Okay. The new stuff was a bit fishy. <gasps> the new stuff. I was like, this sounds like the CD. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but okay. But the regular hits all sounded legit to me. All right, Diana. And good, yeah. All right. Well, good for her. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I have to listen to her new album. Thank Check you. it out, I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, when I was uh, doing uh, all this Mariah um, YouTubing, mm. girl, I was coming up with so many good things like the Diana. I, d I watched all the duets. Mm -hmm. The Mariah Whitney. Mm. The Mariah Aretha. So good. The Mariah Luther, which just had an anniversary. It did. Oh, my gosh. And then when th that... because. I guess Luther Vandross's social media posted um, sort of like a anniversary like thing about it. Yes. And that performance from uh, what? Where is it? I can Royal Albert Hall. Oh, yeah. I can never say those words. UK. Yes. <laughs> um, that is Mariah vocally is stunning mm -hmm. in that performance. Mm -hmm. The vocals are unmatched. I also love his intro to before she comes out. Yes. Because he says the diva, diva. yes, which he, we're going to talk like, about. I, he's like, I need a diva. Yes, yes. the diva has appeared, or what, yeah, whatever yeah. he says. Uh -huh. I'm, it's so interesting. Yeah. Um, how before the 1990s, late 90s diva craze, mm -hmm. people were calling her the diva. Well, we've got a diva lesson in the Meghan Markle podcast, and maybe he was referring to her as the you know singer. Yes, version the the, the, the musical the version. grand dame. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, that's going to be interesting. Talk. We're going to talk about the Meghan Markle podcast after the break. Mm -hmm. But lots to unpack. Oh gosh, so, it's so much, so much. So stay tuned for that. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of anniversary around this time of year because we have the um, the Luther Vandross yes. endless love. Yep. We have um, Music Box has an anniversary. Music Box. Girl, when they said the number of Music Box, how many years, I was like, that's not possible. Mm -hmm. Girl, I can't be that old. 29 years? That's crazy. You're 29 years old? No, I'm older. <laughs> My, and unfortunately, way older. But that's crazy because I remember that era so well. Uh -huh. You know, like I wasn't a little kid. I wasn't, you know, a baby. Like I was bopping and jamming. Wait, 29 years ago. This is where I get confused. Is Music Box before or after Merry Christmas? Before. Before. The year okay. before. Wow. Yeah. But I'm telling you, mm. isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have Butterfly 25. Hashtag yes. Butterfly 25. In two weeks. And I don't think we're getting anything. We haven't heard a peep of nothing. Nothing. Zip. Not Nada. a special vinyl or nothing. I don't know what we're going to do if she gives us nothing. Just play it. <laughs> on your own because we're just gonna play the album you're just gonna deal with it yeah that's what we're gonna do we're <laughs> gonna deal with it Ooh, girl i guess we got everything we need we've got the album we've got the remixes we've got your own final we have all the music videos yeah the music videos are so great they're so good the best honey best oh my god amazing yeah so i don't know i mean obviously we're sitting here waiting for butterfly 25 but i don't think we're getting anything Unless she drops it on the day, everything that we want. Yeah, but what do we? There's not a merch. There's not a people merch. Nothing. There's nothing. No pre-order. 
Not a pre-order. No pre-save. You know they do now the pre-save. Mm-hmm. None of it. Nothing. Okay, girl. Okay. So far. <laughs> as of we'll today, see. there's nothing. We'll see. But, you know, the clock is ticking. So I'm like, okay. I know. Well, it's Butterfly 25. Then the um, Global Citizen is the following week. Yes. That's so, like, we should be getting a lot of Mariah stuff. So uh, he, we're waiting. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Also, the glitter anniversary is coming up. Oh, my gosh. Right. Yeah. We're in September now. 21. Yes. Oh, my That's Lord. That's a good number to celebrate. That makes me feel old, too, because once again, yeah, I remember that era like it was yeah. yesterday. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> also, shout out to Padma Lakshmi, who plays Silk. It's her birthday uh, today. Yeah. The day oh, we're my, recording. Yes, happy birthday all around. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the anniversary. Anniversary's, anniversary's all around. Anniversary's all around. They're all up. around. Exactly. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. But Butterfly is big. Butterfly is big. Well, they're not acting like it's big. I know, I know. That's all right. Do you think that we're going to get like a music box 30 next year? I don't think I don't want it. I don't need it. No. I mean, I love music box. I don't. Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I just like, you know, <laughs> tracks, certain tracks. Yeah. 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 I don't know. 30 is a big year because MC30 was like the first of like the big 30, 30s. Right. But that's, a, that's like the debut. Yeah. But now her third album is now hitting 30 next year. Wait, what did we do anything for yeah, Emotions we did, 30? We did nothing for... We pretended nothing I did, happened. I forgot that it... Did it turn 30? It must have. Does it turn 30 this year? Wait, if Music Box is turning 30 next year, Emotions has to be 30. Emotions came out in 1991. We missed it. Did we miss it? <laughs> forgot about her. <laughs> How could we not celebrate 30 years of emotions? Actually, so Mariah did tweet, someone made a graph of all the different albums, and it's like the fan favorite, the one that divides the fans, and uh-huh. emotions is the one that everyone forgets about. <laughs> oh, no, we, we forgot, forgot about, her. about it. I don't oh, I don't remember anything uh saying or hashtagging or anything of no that. No one cared about her. Oh, poor baby. Poor thing. I love emotions album. Wait, didn't we do a back in time series? You probably, you know what? We celebrated we, it. We are so lying. We did a whole five episodes. <laughs> Girl, what's wrong with us? Was that for the thirty? <laughs> I think it was. We'll pretend it was. It was. It totally was because it was last year. Oh, okay. We so did yes, we did celebrate, but we sure did forget. <laughs> <laughs> we forgot about that, but that's all right. Okay, well, now That's I feel good. less guilty. Exactly. See, we did it. We covered it. Okay. It's all it's all good and done. What are we doing for Butterfly 25? Nothing. We're getting nothing. We thought she was doing something. And we're getting nothing. Maybe we can throw together something. Yeah. Well, we did a, a whole back in time series too, of Butterfly. Yeah. What year was that? 21? 20. 20. That was five years ago? Yeah. Get out of here. Mm-hmm. Oh, my Lord. That's a and five years mm-hmm. ago? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Shoot. Wow. Still here. Time is flying by. I know. Time is really flying by. Now, okay, so we have other um, social media moments. We do. Well, we saw her in the street leaving the house. Oh, yes, we did. We got a new picture of her. Oh, we haven't seen her in a minute. I know. Okay. All right. So When she's... was the last time we saw her? Well, we saw her when she was signing the vinyls in the restaurant. Yes. With, with Brian. Yes, yes. Like right when she came back from Italy. But that was like, what, two, three weeks ago? Mm-hmm. So it's been a few weeks. And, you know, we like our Mariah on the daily. We do. <laughs> <laughs> we do. So two weeks is too long. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> um, but she was leaving the house with Brian in like a little wrap dress. Well, not like, like was... a nude colored, a light uh-huh. brown, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Flesh toned. Mm-hmm. And with those sunglasses. Yep. Not my favorite sunglasses. Uh, no. <laughs> Simple enough. No. <laughs> uh, but you know, whatever. But here's the crazy thing. Okay. Now, we don't know where she was going or where she, or how, why she was leaving the house. I mean, she's allowed to, for sure. But um, we, well, we came across some social media moments where people were saying that she was in a little tiny town in Vermont. Okay, well, you know, when she leaves the house, it's a big deal. Right. So on Twitter, listen, we didn't have to do much. Listen. But we, we... found out where she was going, what she was up to. Yes. So on Twitter, this is Megan Mayhew Bergman, and I guess she's a local reporter in Vermont. She has an official tick and everything. 
but she tweeted, apparently Mariah Carey was in North Bennington last night for a friend's wedding and ate at the tiny restaurant in the center of town. Can't, huh? can't fathom. So she went to some small town in yeah, Vermont. Mariah just out here with the locals. Yeah, with the locals. With the locals. Now, North Bennington, I think, is only a town of like 1,500 people. Ish, maybe. I think because I Googled it, I do remember. Because I was like, where is that? Right. I don't even know where Vermont is. It's north of it's, New York. Yes, it's up there. Towards Canada. Uh-huh. So she made it. She was traveling. Yeah. All right. For a, I don't For a wonder wedding. whose wedding. Well, when you head up to that part of the country, it gets very scenic and picturesque. So I'm oh. sure it's a beautiful ve venue. Oh, I'm sure. Very ski people. Oh, they ski over there? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. In the mountains? Yeah. Oh, okay. Bernie okay. Sanders. Oh, very Bernie Sanders. You know? Yeah, I'm getting, yeah, that's where he's from. Yes. Right? Uh huh. Okay. Well, now Mariah's out there with the, with the people mm -hmm. of Vermont. That's mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. I mean, people were pro probably gagged. Right. They Harrison to, Town? Yeah. Yeah. Right? You would be. I mean, I would be. People gag when she leaves, goes to whatever city. Well, yeah. Capri, Australia. Oh. Sydney. Everywhere. Yeah. Global. Yes. She's a global icon. I know. I Just know. saying. So imagine she rocks up to your small town. Yeah. it's it's It makes the Twitter feed. I guess. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen pictures of Mariah in a little tiny town like that, though. But we got the pictures of her leaving the house. That's fine. Well, when they say small town restaurants, so I've been to like a random small town restaurant here, like within my travels. It's usually like a diner and the menu is like a burger and fries. Yeah. So I wonder what I want to know more about the restaurant. Yeah. We might have to Google what restaurants the are. Two restaurants, the two restaurants. Call both of them up. Look at their menus. <laughs> call them up. That's how crazy we are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, we're going to take a quick splash break. But I just want to, before we go, I know um, there were other social media moments um, with Trey Lorenz. Okay, so this was, this is interesting. I think Trey's new to social media. So maybe some things slipped that shouldn't have slipped. But he did post something talking, asking a photo of his hair. And the question was, should I cut my pandemic hair? I'm going to be doing some shows. Plural mm -hmm. with MC Mariah. Mm -hmm. Now we know about the global citizens, but now he's alluded that there's plural, yes, shows coming up, which is very interesting, right? And then didn't he also do another little uh, Facebook post or tweet or something where he said there might be some Christmas shows as well? Right, that will make sense. I mean, it does make sense. I mean, it is her season, and time to fire that back up. Yeah. I just hope that she would do a new set list. But is that something you want? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's 50-50. It might be the exact same show. There's a wheeled out of the warehouse or a revamped version. A revamp. Well, it's time to revamp, I think. But either I way. It was time to revamp it six ago. <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, ten yeah. years ago, whatever many years. But no, I think it would be great for Mariah to go out, do a couple more shows. Just, you know, a few, a handful here and there. Wait. What? I just remembered. Yes. Remember we reported a rumor on the street that she could be doing something in the Philippines. I don't remember that. Uh, I'm getting flat. I can't remember the exact source. I remember there was like rumors that a stadium in the Philippines had been booked around Christmas. Really? Okay. She's going to go global. Don't quote me. Don't get excited. I feel like maybe that happens. But something that is could going, be a thing. That something could be a thing. going to happen. Put a pin in that. All right. Well, of course, we'll be reporting if she does. Yeah. Actually, Filipino lands. Chime in. What do you know? Yeah. Yeah. Tell us everything. What's, on, what's happening in the Philippine street? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be great if she did, did some shows, does some shows. But yeah, more Mariah. We need to see her, you know, live in concert again. I think it's time. A lot of people are going out and, on tour now. So mm -hmm. I think the time has come mm -hmm. to cut the pandemic hair and get back on stage. It is. I'm ready for Mariah show. After the Diana Ross show, I was like, I'm ready for yeah. Mariah action. Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm yeah. excited. It was fun. We'll see what she can come up with. Yes. Some changes to the set list for Christmas. Right. So, <laughs> well, I think it's confirmed that there's action approaching. Yeah. Mariah action. So we got something to look forward to. If we get nothing for Butterfly 25... We'll get something sooner or later. Mm -hmm. And we know that Global Citizen is coming up. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's let's get it. Let's I want to be there now. Yes. All right. It's coming. 
All right, so let's take a quick splash break and we'll get into the Meghan Markle podcast. The Mariah Report is supported by podcastcbd.com. Use the promo code REPORT to get 10% off of any purchase and free shipping on orders over $50. Dan, I'm so excited to bring this product to our listeners because it's something that I've been taking for a while now. And at podcastcbd.com, you can get something called Wild Gummies. They come in the raspberry flavor. They are delicious. Now, I've been hearing everybody in the streets talk about CBD this, CBD that, and I have no idea what CBD is. Think of it as a natural compound or even as a supplement that you add to your health regimen. So CBD is something that your body makes naturally, your brain makes it, especially after you exercise. And so taking a gummy uh, gives your body a boost. And I actually used to be a skeptic until I realized that I was doing it completely wrong. Well, how, what were you doing wrong? How are you supposed to do it right? So when I first tried it, I was just taking like one dose. I wasn't even measuring how much I was taking. I just tried it and hoped for the best and really nothing really happened at all. I didn't feel anything, didn't do anything. So I just thought it was bogus. However, somebody explained to me that what you need to do is measure how much you're taking. So for example, the gummies, the wild gummies, they are 25 milligrams a piece. And then so you know the the dose and then you take it daily to get the benefits. And what are the benefits of these CBD gummies? So the main one for me is that I used to have horrible sleep issues. I couldn't get to sleep, couldn't stay asleep. I would wake up in the middle of the night. I wasn't falling asleep until 2 a.m. It wasn't good. So I started taking these to help with that. And I found it really did help me fall asleep earlier. And I was able to stay asleep and I was waking up refreshed as well. That was the main benefit of it. And I also found it really helped with my anxiety that I had. It's brought me back from anxiety attack several times. It kind of just takes the edge off it. Again, nat- completely natural. And then the shocking thing that happened was it really cleared up a lot of my joint pain after a couple of weeks. Uh huh. And unlike taking a Tylenol or something like that, that just covers up the pain and temporarily relieves it, it actually got rid of the inflammation in, in my joints. Well, these benefits sound real yummy to me, so I might not need to go get some of these gummies. Yeah, so make sure you head over to podcastcbd.com, use the promo code REPORT to support this podcast, The Mariah Report, and get yourself some premium lab-tested hemp CBD products. All right, so let's get into the huge news of the week we're hearing from Mariah. Yeah, finally, and in the podcast space, we love Mariah on a podcast. We I do, mean, we if do. she were to come here to the Mariah Report, it would be fabulous. It would, just saying, it would, it would be, <laughs> it'd be long. Yes, we've been waiting, we've been waiting. But she's, uh, she did another podcast, uh, what a year or so ago, two years ago, maybe with Quest Love. Yeah, and now she's over here with Meghan Markle. Right. It's been a while since she's been on a podcast right? Yeah, before this. She really should get into more podcasts. I mean, I'm just saying. It's where everybody's at now. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. And that's why Megan has hers. Now, um, this is episode two of Archetype, Yep. where um, uh, Megan Markle has her Spotify exclusive podcasts mm-hmm. over there. That's correct. And it, uh, it's doing very well. It's number one on Spotify. Number one. It's beating now, Joe Rogan, mm-hmm. which is a big deal. He's got huge numbers. Everybody listens to him. Right. I mean, I don't. No. <laughs> I absolutely do not. I would never even be interested. But he pulls in millions of listeners, mm-hmm. like tens of millions, yes, right? It's huge, huge. So numbers. for her to be, uh, Meghan Markle to be uh, outnumbering him in downloads and listens, that's huge. Mm-hmm. And to have Mariah there, mm-hmm. even better. Right. Even better. Well, the great thing is, numbers wise, is that. Uh, week one with Megan, she was number one on Spotify with Serena Williams. Mm-hmm. Week two, she held the spot and is still holding the spot yeah. with Mariah. People are listening. Yes. And I have heard nothing bad about Mariah's appearance. No. Or guest. The, uh, good things from Mariah's appearance. Everything is good. The conversation was good. Mm-hmm. Um, they hit all the good topics. Mm-hmm. They had some other guests there as well. Experts. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. So that was interesting. It was. Um, and Mariah was there more as like almost an expert. Well, she is. Yeah. So the topic was diva. Mm-hmm. The word diva. Yes. What does it mean? Listen to the podcast. But they get into it. <laughs> they go way back and do all of it. Yes. Not a new word around these parts. Right. We've been knowing. Yeah. 
So um, it was, but it was very interesting, the conversation around divas. At one point in the um, podcast interview, Mariah sort of jokingly says that Megan is a diva. And you could sort of hear that Megan was like, what? I'm not a diva. Like, don't, don't put me in that box. But like, that's the whole point of what you're trying to say in this podcast. I know. How the word is misinterpreted by Right. So many like it's people. not a bad thing. It's, it's not bad. Right. It's not a bad thing. Right. Um, but I also feel like Megan is sort of defensive on that because she is bashed so much mm-hmm. by the press and media mm-hmm. that like, uh, don't call me anything that has any bad, you know, connotation or connection because people are calling me everything, you know? Well, that was the in- interesting moment that got picked up a lot mm-hmm. in the press was that moment Mariah called her a diva. Right. I think Megan is on a campaign to uh, Megan lovers don't hate me. I think Megan's on a campaign to humbleize herself, I guess, like act like the regular woman. I'm not a princess. Uh, I'm just, you know, regular girl. Yeah. And so Mariah calling her a diva, I think foiled her plan. Right. And I mean, Megan does address this in the podcast. She was like, you know, I obviously in the moment was like thinking it was something bad, but no, like mm-hmm. it's okay. You can be a diva. It's fine. I expect fine. that from her. Yeah. Yeah. Why wouldn't you be? Right. You got all the crown jewels and everything. Yeah. You think the queen of England is walking around not like a diva? Uh-huh. She's a diva. Yeah. You know? So I don't know. I think it's very interesting um, talk around that that word and how it's utilized. It was interesting. Yes. Absolutely. Well, Mariah clarified that she's doing it for fun. Right. And and even in the the episode... I love that they used all these different clips of Mariah, right? Yeah. They uh Megan talks about how Mariah's MTV Cribs. Oh yeah. That everyone was like, "Oh, she's so over the top. She's, you know, this big diva walking around her house and lingerie and, you know, being a diva and everything." But it's like, "Okay, that's not she's not serious." Right. Cameras are in your house. Right. Like, <laughs> and I think Mariah has even said this before in interviews. She's like, these people are coming to my house to like, so I can talk about how fabulously I live. Like, that's a joke. Like, uh-huh. that's not right. Like, so you have to like make fun of it as well. Uh-huh. You know, you have to, it's a little tongue in cheek, if you will. Yes. You have to have fun. And that's why not point. play it up a little bit? Yeah. You know, so I, I love all of it. I get Mariah's divaness. I get her over the top, the glamour, the dresses, the jewels, all of that. I get it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if a lot of other people get it, but after this podcast, if people listen to it, they might have a better understanding mm-hmm. of where Mariah comes from mm-hmm. with the word diva. Well, I also feel like a lot of people call her the diva. Yeah. She's not really actively saying I'm a diva. No, nobody calls themselves the diva. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I did think it was really interesting how Mariah was talking about how everybody calls themselves divas now. And she's like, oh, I'm the cupcake diva. I know, I'm the, this, I know. And it's so true. Yes. But like, you don't, if you're calling yourself a diva, then you're not really a diva. Uh-huh. It has come from other people. <laughs> it has to be um, anointed onto you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, well, the thing is, I think Megan is trying to um, defuse that out of her life. Yeah, but like she didn't do anything. She's just being her. And like, of course, but then people think she's a diva because she walks around royally. Royally, but I think getting Harry out of the royal family and leaving England, I think that was seen as a real diva move. Diva move. Oh, which it is. I mean, I guess it is, but I mean, I think, you know, when I think Meghan Markle's a diva, it's because of the things that Mariah was saying. You walk with the jewels, Mm -hmm. the gorgeous clothes, you're a gorgeous woman, and you walk with, you know, regalness. She had a royal wedding. Exactly. I mean, does it get more diva than that? It does not. It does not. (laughs) I remember, girl, that dress was gorgeous. Yes. Yes. So it's like you should own that divaness. Yeah. There's nothing wrong about that. You know, Mm -hmm. so, but I see that like maybe Megan is trying to be more your average girl next door. Yeah. But you're not. No. You're not. So don't try to be something you're not. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure she's cool. Hang out with her, you know, blah, blah, blah. Share baby stories. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you can. Yeah. But you're also married to a prince. Right. So you're a princess. She's the Duchess of Sussex. (laughs) That's her name. And you should own it and be okay with it. It's, it's not cool. a problem. It's fine. I'm fine with it. Girl, that's who she is. 
Well, you know, she's having a different experience too because people are so um, angry at her and and venomous. Like they have a vengeance against her for some mm-hmm. reason. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm not, I'm not bent out of shape no. about her at all. Like she's never done anything weird. Girl, I don't even really know her. Right. I like what I see. She seems fine that's to me. It, that's it. Yeah. So why is everybody so angry? Mm-hmm. Oh, girl, please. I did. <laughs> so I did like that she is a Mariah fan. She's a lamb. Oh, my God. Yes, she was really fangirling yeah, out. she knew things. Yes. Oh, my God. And I love how they incorporated certain things like um, the Touch My Body performance. Yes. The the Honey music video. That's the moment. What were we just talking about uh, that? Yes. I'm telling you. I was like, okay, so she knows what's up. She yes. knows. She was talking about Divas Live. The all Dream that kind Lover. Of stuff. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. The Dream mm-hmm. Lover video. Yeah, because, I mean... Megan was a teenager during those times. Every teenager was obsessed with Mariah. Right. But she also highlighted that she could tell that she was mixed race mm-hmm. as well. Like mm-hmm. a, that was a, um important factor of the conversation. Yes, absolutely. So they do talk about being mixed mm-hmm. and perception and hair mm-hmm. of, of mixed uh, and all that kind of good stuff. And they were talking about the products they use. Yes. yes. All kinds of girl. They was chatting like girls. I know there's more tape and I want the tape. I know. Uh, girl, extra tape. I'm sure they were talking, talking, talking. Yeah. Girl talking all the way. I know. They seem to really get along uh, with each other. So that was cute. I know it was cute. Yeah. So I think we made, made a prediction. Maybe it was here on this show. Maybe it was the Patreon after sh- uh, unplugged show. But we were trying to figure out when it was done, and it was done around the BET performance. Mm-hmm. And Mariah was saying she had just done that. And she's still wearing the dress. Uh-huh. I said, That's a diva. Yes. And it's okay. It is. It because is. you know, you've earned that title. And another thing that they talk about um is um the opera divas. Mm-hmm. And how oh, Leighton Price. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they talk about her and like again, she was anointed as the diva, the prima donna. And it was it was a good thing back in the day. Because in opera, it's part of the culture. Right. And that's why Mariah's always been familiar with the diva dumb mm-hmm. of everything. Mm-hmm. So that's just regular every day for Mariah. Mm-hmm. But these other people, I don't know. I know. I will also like they, I think they touched on that they, people don't like powerful women. Oh, yes. I wanted them to talk more about that. Yes. Uh-huh. You know? Because that's a that's a deep conversation. They did touch upon some really deep things, but they really didn't dive into them. I know, like the you know, um, the biracialness of it. Mm-hmm. They could have talked a lot more about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did think it was interesting how Megan brought up Holly Berry. Like people see her as a black woman, mm. and people see Mariah, and I mean, we all know. That Mariah is not a white woman, mm-hmm. but that's how people perceive her. Mm-hmm. And especially in the early years, especially in the early years. Mm-hmm. But it's like, if you really look, you can see Mariah is not a white woman. Right. You, it's just, that's just not it. But that's how they were doing it. Something that did catch my attention, tell me if you picked this up, is that was Mariah downplaying her Venezuelanness? Did I you catch that? I did catch that. I, I feel like she mentioned it. She was like, oh, you know, it's because it's my grandmother's grandmother or whatever was Venezuelan. People would love to bring that up. Like, I'm just black. My family's black. Right. Exactly. I don't think she was downplaying it. I think she was just bringing it up to make a point of they wanted- how the media wanted to make it be like, well, this is why Mariah is so light skinned because mm. she has Venezuelan in her blood, mm. you know, from three, four generations ago. Mm-hmm. And like, that's not it. I mean, maybe, but like her father's entire family doesn't look like mixed people. Right. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Right. So Mariah's mixed because her dad is black and her mom is white. Right. That's why she looks the way she does. Yeah. But it just depends on... But they want to bring up the Venezuelan. Right. To sort of... um. Add a label? I don't know what to I guess call that. add a label or um, boxer in something. W- just rationalize why she's so light skinned. Yeah, because her, her, her Mariah's argument was, why can't we just be mixed? Like, that's it. Right. Deal with it. Yeah. But again, it's because other, other people want to put you somewhere. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for a long time, especially when Mariah's early years, being mixed wasn't a category people could put you in. Right. So you were either black or you were white. And Mariah had to fit into one of those. I think today, nowadays, it's much different. It's very, very wide spectrum. But people still want to put you somewhere. They mm-hmm. have to label you. 
that moment is so in the movie glitter um if you remember little mariah when she goes to the orphanage for the first time she meets little debrat and little the other friend uh-huh <laughs> i always forget her name <laughs> roxy roxy and they go what are you you mixed or something mm-hmm. oh, what are you you puerto rican mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. happens to people it happens to me all the time you get asked that question all the time like what are you yeah they can't figure it out they want to put you in something right because they have to know and it's like well can't we just be like what does it matter mm-hmm. you know and i think that was mariah's whole point with that part of the conversation it's very interesting i wish they would have like talked about that more mm-hmm. and, but i mean i guess the topic was the really diva. divas not <laughs> skin Mixed color race. and race yeah yeah um but they need to revisit and maybe do an episode about that yeah because i think that would be fascinating as well i know um <clears throat> but yeah I, overall i loved it yeah people did complain about that conversation but then i'm like no i like that conversation oh i love that conversation yeah every bit about it and i think uh, when I was looking at the social media and everything, all the major publications were writing about this mm-hmm. and they were writing about um, that Holly Berry comment mm-hmm. and how people didn't look, Megan says she didn't feel like people looked at her as a black woman until she got married. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. Yes. Interesting. I want more of that. Mm-hmm. But it seems like all the magazines, all the publications were loving, were loving it. Loving Mariah. They loving. Lo- mm-hmm. I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing or a good thing for Megan, but they loved when Mariah called her a diva. Mm-hmm. They loved that. And they're like, oh, Mariah called her out. Yes. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, call her a diva. Call me a girl girl diva. Yeah. But they made it in a good way. Like, oh, Mariah's like, you know, um, I, not attacking, but like, you know, putting her in her place, <laughs> like letting her know what she is. Yeah. yeah we, so Mariah came off good. I was even like looking at on YouTube, like looking at, um, news outlets that had put that had done stories on it reading the comments uh, of Joe Schmo, uh-huh. people were loving mariah uh, see they weren't I'm hating at you. all if people gave mariah a moment they Lots, would see right hating on megan a lot but then a lot of like oh my god i love mariah carey now i didn't realize mariah was like this i'm so glad mariah like told her that yeah so i think overall a great thing for mariah and the numbers of mm-hmm. people listening to this getting people to connect with mariah is a good thing very good so you know a lot of people don't aren't able to connect with megan maybe Mm -hmm. but if mariah they can connect with mariah then it's a win it's a win situation so i love that she did this i love that you know what else when you really look at the big picture of things i love that mariah's doing podcasts or interviews about things a little outside of music Right. She's not there to promote something. Mm -hmm. She's there to have like an intelligent conversation. Right. And a lot of times when we do see Mariah, we're just seeing, oh, I have a new album or, Mm -hmm. oh, it's Christmas time or, oh, I'm, you know, selling this or that. We love that. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But I love when we can have intelligent conversations with Mariah as well. Yeah. So I think it was amazing that she did this show, this podcast. No, I agree. It's great for her. Oh, for sure. Definitely. And I love that Megan wanted Mariah to do this. Like, mm-hmm. she's like, well, Mariah, we got to get Mariah on to talk about stuff. I will say my only critique of the whole thing was the show in general feels a little too produced. Right. A little too scripted. I think one of the nice things about podcasting is that it can be kind of raggedy and loose and, and off the cuff and free, free flowing. Yes. And where you can connect with people and their personalities and stuff like that. And let the conversation go in different directions and then bring it back around when you need to. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like, you know, I wish it was a little uh, less produced. Mm-hmm. Because I will say, you know, in the, no, no shade to Oprah, but this seemed like an Oprah episode. Yeah. Like you could watch this episode, like this would be on TV. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. And I think for podcasts, it is more conversational mm-hmm. or it should be, mm-hmm. or like, at least that's what I like in podcasts. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if you're going to do such a structured production, put it on TV. Cause I want to see it. Oh, that's the thing. You I, know want, what I, I mean? wanted to see that. You're I wanted right. to see that, mm-hmm. you know, but if I want to listen, I want to listen to a conversation for sure. Yeah. But with the way that that was all done and produced, I feel like this is something I want to watch. With so many moving <clears throat> parts, like so many segments and, and mm-hmm. voice changes and and uh, interludes and everything. You right. wanna, you need a visual to help you yeah, track all that. Yeah, or like the fact that you bring in other sort of experts and guests. Mm-hmm. You you want to be able to see that, right? You know, you want to be able to see who's talking. Yeah. Otherwise, like why did why did you have one uh, uh, Amanda Seals come on for one comment? Mm-hmm. That's television production, mm-hmm. not podcast producing. 
Well, you know what I'm two different things. That's sort of what's happening in the industry now is that yeah. people are shifting out of TV and the traditional things and coming to podcasts and just bringing that old mentality. Yeah. That old sort of TV structure. Right. That's and, all I know. Yeah. That's it. Uh, Not like so this that, mess. So that is probably yeah. the only, you know, criticism of it. But again, well, the, it's the, good for Mariah. Good for Mariah. But uh, I think what they're trying to intend is to get people to get to know Megan better and connect better. And I feel like because it's so overproduced that that's not happening. I'm getting like scripted actor vibes. Yeah. Whereas I want to get to know Megan. Sure, I'll tune yeah, in. Sure, girl. But I want it to be her free flowing and natural. Yeah. Organic. How you normal? How would you sit and have a conversation with Mariah? Exactly. This you were trying to like you know do too much. Right. Which okay, that's fine. That's great. But it's just you know. It, it is have, what it is. Could have been better if it was worse, if that makes sense. <laughs> if, you know what I mean? If it was less um, polished, yeah, uh -huh. it could have been better. But either way. Just like the Questlove interview. Very li like that. Just like a yep. long conversation between the two, Questlove yep. and Mariah. Absolutely. That's, that's, you know what I mean? Because Mariah is so used to doing like television interviews or structured type of stuff. The Oprah's, the Barbara Walters. Mm -hmm. I want to hear Mariah unfiltered. Yeah. You know, and yeah. so when you think of Mariah on a podcast, you want a little bit of that. And right. this didn't have that. Mm -hmm. But again, if the general public is loving it and connecting with Mariah and relating to Mariah or seeing Mariah in a new light, mm -hmm. then it's a success. Yeah. So I'm happy. No, I think overall a big um, success, like you yeah. said. <laughs> yes. I don't know what else to say. A big thumbs up. Yes, two thumbs up. Two <laughs> thumbs up. Um, and maybe I'll tune into some of these other Meghan Markle podcasts just to see how those are. I'll check them out. Anybody um, catches my eye? Why yeah, because I didn't listen to the one with Serena Williams, and she I'm sure she has other big name guests coming as well. So um, we'll see. We'll see what uh, she does on other episodes. Yeah, I just found the whole reaction to it so interesting. Yeah. Just how this, like, there's people who love Meghan, and then there's people who are, like, out for blood. Like, it's, hate her. Mm -hmm. But they're still going to listen. And, but they listened. That's, it, the that's, thing. that's a crazy thing to me. Yeah. And then Mariah was like falling right in the middle of all that mess. Right. So interesting dynamic for mm -hmm. sure. Um, I was worried that it, because of the topic diva, it would make Mariah look bad. But I think nothing to worry about. No, that's absolutely nothing. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, lovely. Now, we didn't get our wish of some sort of announcement of any kind. <laughs> Nothing. No, nothing. But announced. again, that's probably a good thing because again, it's not her promoting anything. Right. Right. Which we don't need. We want to have a conversation. True. But yeah. I'm just thinking but numbers wise. Numbers wise would have been the time to announce something if we're getting it. True. But it seems like not. We're not getting it. We're not getting it. Nothing. Well, I don't know. Yeah. We'll <laughs> just have to wait and see. Wait and see. Yeah. But um, check I, it out if you yeah. haven't heard it. Absolutely. Uh, we will wrap up this episode and we will keep reporting yes. on Butterfly 25 or anything else that comes our way. <laughs> yes, indeed. And don't forget, please go and leave us an Apple podcast review. It helps the show grow. It also helps other people find us, especially now that there's Mariah in the podcast space. It yes. will help a lot if you leave a review for us and hit follow on your favorite podcast app and subscribe on YouTube. All that. And if you want to help support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash the Mariah Report. And uh, for as little as $5 a month, you can see all the behind the scenes. And the hot sauce challenge is near. Oh, we're almost at the goal. Oh, no. People have signed up just for the hot sauce I know. moment. And it's now it's going to happen. It's happening soon. <laughs> so please, we still need more supporters. So please head over to patreon.com slash the Mariah Report. The link is in the description. Cancel anytime. There's no strings. Around the world, it's global as well. We love global. We love global we love moments. <laughs> we have a global community over there yes, too. It's absolutely. So much fun. It's good. It's good times. Yeah. Um, but thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And thanks for supporting. Bye. Bye. The Mariah Report is produced and edited by Dan Enriquez and Martin Burgess. Hosted by Dan Enriquez and Martin Burgess. Graphics created by Sean Mark. Theme music created by e Reezy Beats. Thank you to the listeners who support the show on Patreon. If you'd like to show your support or for more information, visit the show notes in your podcast app.